Welcome friends to a new session on translation machinery and translation introcaryotes. In this session, we will discuss on basic requirements of translation and protein synthesis in prokaryotes. Protein synthesis or translation may be the most complex synthetic activity in a cell. In this process, genetic information contained within the order of nucleotides in a messenger RNA that is mRNA is used to generate the linear sequences of amino acids in proteins. The process of translation is highly conserved in all organisms and most energetically costly for the cell. In a rapidly growing bacterial cell, up to 80% of the cell's energy and 50% of cell's dry weight are used for the protein synthesis. Indeed, the synthesis of single protein requires the coordinate actions of protein synthesizing machineries. The machinery responsible for translating mRNA into protein is composed of the following components mRNA, tRNA, amino acyl tRNA synthase, ribosome, enzymes, adenosine triphosphate, guanosine triphosphate, soluble protein and transfer factor and various other inorganic factors such as Mg2+, K+, and NH+. Next, we can consider the key attributes of mRNA, tRNA, ribosomes and tRNA synthetases. First, we can discuss on mRNA. The information needed to direct the synthesis of proteins is contained in the mRNA in the form of genetic code. Genetic code is a system of RNA sequences that designate particular amino acid in the process of translation. Let's discuss on features of genetic code. Now, number of codon bases. Because mRNA are composed of four bases that is adenine, uracil, guanine and cytosin, each codon consists of three bases. There are 4 raised to 3 or 64 possible codon sequences. Next, start and stop codons. In both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, the codon AUG is used to initiate polypeptide chains. In rare instances, GUG is used as initiation codon. In both cases, the initiation codon is recognized by an initiator tRNA, tRNA FMET in prokaryotes and tRNA IMET in eukaryotes. Of the 64 codons, 61 specify amino acids, the remaining 3 that is UAA otherwise known as occur, UAG amber and UGA opal are called stop codons or termination codons. These codons facilitate codes for termination of translation. Next, degeneracy. Most amino acids are specified by more than one triplet codon. The degeneracy is due to Vobel pairing of nucleotides. Now, let's discuss on Vobel hypothesis. codon anticodon interaction is due to complement base pairing between the two triplets, which line up antiparallel to one another. The base pairing between 5 prime end of codon and 3 prime end of anticodon is the usual watson crick base pairing. That is, adenine always binds with uracil and guanine with cytosine, as is the base pairing of the middle base of the triplet. But in Vobel pairing, when the 5 prime end base, that is first base of the anticodon is C or A, the base pairing with the codon is regular. That is, the base in the codon is G or U. If the first base of the anticodon is U, then the 3 prime end base, that is third base of the codon, can be either G or A. If the first base of the anticodon is G, then the third base of the codon can be U or C. If the first base of the anticodon is inosin, then the third base of the codon can be A, C or U and but cannot be G. Please see the table on the screen that may give you more clarity on this concept. Synonyms. Codons that designate same amino acids are called synonyms. Synonyms codons only differ in the third base of codon. 
different amino acids are specified by different number of codons. For instance, the amino acids like methionine and tryptophan are specified by a single codon, while leucine, serine and arginine are each specified by six codons. The codes does not overlap. During translation, the code read sequentially without spacer bases from a fixed starting point. Some viral genome shows exceptions, means their genetic code may overlap and codes for multiple products in different reading frames. Next, genetic code is nearly universal. Genetic code with few exceptions is identical in all species. Exceptions to universality of genetic code are found in many animals including human mitochondrial genome. The code on UGA normally specifies termination. It specifies the amino acid tryptophan in yeast and human mitochondria. AUA which normally specify isoleucine directs insertion of methionine in human mitochondrion. In bacterium, mycoplasma capricolum and in nuclear genes of protozoan ciliates like paramecia, stylolochia and tetrahymena, the termination code on UGA calls for tryptophan. AUA specifies isoleucine in cytoplasm and methionine in mitochondria. In cytoplasm, methionine is specified by AUG. In a similar way, UGA calls for termination in cytoplasm but calls for tryptophan in the mitochondria. Genetic code has collinearity. The codon in mRNA and the corresponding amino acid residue in the polypeptide chain have a linear arrangement. mRNAs have ribosome binding sites for translation. Ribosomes must be recruited to mRNA for translation. To facilitate ribosome binding in prokaryotes, start codon is preceded by a region of sequences called shine dalgarno sequences. 5 prime, A, G, G, A, G, G, 3 prime which are complementary to 16S rRNA component 5 prime CCU CCU 3 prime of ribosome. In eukaryotes, ribosome binding occur by a methylated guanine nucleotide at the 5 prime end of mRNA called 5 prime cap. In mammalian mRNA, some conserved sequences are seen 2 to 3 nucleotides upstream of start codon called COSAC sequences, which are also helpful for stimulating translation. Transfer RNA, tRNA. It was originally called adapter RNA. For each amino acid, there is one or more specific tRNA. All tRNAs serve to transfer amino acids to ribosome and facilitates the incorporation of the amino acids into newly synthesized proteins in a template dependent manner. We can discuss the structure of tRNA. All tRNA molecules have certain feature in common. All tRNAs end at the 3 prime terminus with a sequence 5 prime CCA 3 prime. This is the site that is attached to the cognate amino acid by the enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthase. The second striking aspect of tRNA is the presence of unusual nucleotides in their primary structure. These modified bases are helpful for increased tRNA function. The secondary structure of tRNA is also called as clover leaf model. The principal features of clover leaf model are an acceptor arm, three stem loops which are referred to as psi u loop, the d loop and the anticodon loop and four variable loops. The acceptor arm. It is so named because it is a site of attachment of amino acids. It is formed by the pairing between 5 prime and 3 prime ends of tRNA molecules. The 5 prime CCA3 prime at the extreme 3 prime end of molecule protrude from this double stranded step. Now the psi U arm. It is so named because of the characteristic presence of unusual base pseudo uracil in the loop. This loop is helpful for ribosome binding. The D loop. This loop takes its name due to the presence of dihydrouridin in this loop, which is helpful for the attachment of the enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthase. Anticodon loop. It is so named because it contains the anticodons. 
The anticodons are three nucleotide long decoding elements that is responsible for recognizing the codon by base pairing with the mRNA. Variable loop. It is seen between the anticodon loop and psi u loop and as its name implies varies in size from 3 to 21 bases. Amino acyl tRNA synthetases. The process of pre-tRNA synthesis by RNA polymerase 3 only creates the RNA portion of the adapter molecule. The corresponding amino acid must be added later once the tRNA is processed and exported to the cytoplasm. Through the process of tRNA charging, each tRNA molecule is linked to its correct amino acid by a group of enzymes called amino acyl tRNA synthetases. At least one type of amino acyl tRNA synthetase exists for each of the 20 amino acids. The exact number of amino acyl tRNA synthetases varies by species. These enzymes first bind and hydrolyze ATP to catalyze a high energy bond between an amino acid and adenosine monophosphate. A pyrophosphate molecule is expelled in this reaction. The activated amino acid is then transferred to the tRNA and AMP is released. Now, Ribosomes. Ribosomes are nucleoproteins. They are formed by nucleic acid that is RNA and protein. Most ribosomal proteins are small basic proteins. Their basic charge reflects their ability to interact with positively charged RNA. The ribosome has three sites for tRNA to bind. They are the amino acyl site abbreviated as A, the peptidyl site abbreviated P, and the exit site abbreviated E. With respect to the mRNA, the three sites are oriented 5' prime to 3' prime, E, P, A because ribosomes move towards the 3' prime end of the mRNA. The A site binds the incoming tRNA with the complementary codon on the mRNA. The P site holds the tRNA with the growing polypeptide chain and the E site holds the tRNA without its amino acid. The structure of ribosomes is different in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Now, the prokaryotic ribosome. It is a large structure with a sedimentation coefficient of 70s. The ribosome is made of two subunits, the 50s larger subunit and 30s small subunit. The 50s subunit is made of 34 large subunit proteins and 23s and 5s ribosomal RNA that is rRNA. The 30th subunit is made of 21 small subunit proteins, 16S rRNA. Eukaryotic ribosome, it is made of 2 subunits, 60S large subunit and 40 small subunit. The 60th subunit is made of 45 proteins and 3 rRNAs, that is 28S, 5S and 5.8S. The 40S subunit is made of 33 proteins and an 18S rRNA. Translation in prokaryotes. In prokaryotes, no nuclear membrane separates DNA from cytoplasm and its ribosome. Thus, the process of translation or polypeptide synthesis begins even before mRNA synthesis is completed. This process is called coupled transcription translation. It does not occur in eukaryotes because transcription occurs inside the nucleus and translation in cytoplasm. In prokaryotes, protein synthesis occur in three stages, initiation, elongation and termination. Let us discuss the stages one by one. Now we can discuss on initiation. Initiation of protein synthesis consists of two processes: formation of 30S initiation complex and formation of 70S initiation complex. First, formation of 30S initiation complex. It requires the following process, a strand of mRNA the initiation factors like AIF1, IF2 and IF3 and guanosine triphosphate that is GTP, a 30S subunit. Since in the cell nearly all ribosomes exist as 70S particles, the dissociation of 70S particles requires the initiation factors IF1 and IF3. 70S ribosome, 50S plus 30S. This 30S binds with IF3 and plus 50s. The IF3 primarily acts as anti-association factor. 
IF1 increases the rate of forward reaction. Now, formyl methionine tRNA or FMET tRNA. A specific tRNA called FMET tRNA brings a modified methionine to 30S initiation complex. tRNA F has a different sequence than the tRNA that inserts methionine in internal position of the peptide chain. Both methionine and N formal methionine are linked to tRNA by same amino acyl tRNA synthetases. Please see the picture. Steps in the formation of 30S initiation complex. The 30S subunit is associated with IF1, IF2 and IF3. IF3 is required for binding mRNA to 30S subunit. The 30S subunit binds on purine rich shine dalgana sequences in mRNA which is either identical or similar to the sequences A, G, G, A, G, G, U. Base pairs with the pyrimidine sequence in the 16S rRNA. The shine dalgana sequence lies within 10 nucleotides of the initiated codon. It places the initiated codon in the appropriate position in the 30S subunit to bind to the initiated tRNA, FMET tRNA. To combine tRNA to 30S subunit, IF2 and GTP is required. IF3 dissociate from 30S subunit upon the binding of FMET tRNA. Formation of 70S initiation complex. The release of IF3 allows the 50S subunit to bind to the 30S initiation complex to form the 70S initiation complex. The GDP is hydrolyzed to GDP and an inorganic phosphate upon the formation of 70S initiation complex. Then the initiation factors that is IF1, IF2 and the GDP and the inorganic phosphate are released from 70S initiation complex. There are three sites on 70S ribosomes, the amino site that is A site, peptide site P site and ejection site that is E site. The P site is occupied by FMET tRNA during initiation. Elongation. In this phase, the amino acylated tRNA that is complementary to the codon adjacent to initiation codon that is AUG is inserted in the A site starting the process of elongation. Three elongation factors EFs that is EFTU, EFTS and EFG are required for elongation. EFTU is helpful for the delivery of an amino acid tRNA to the empty A site on the ribosome. GTP bound to EFTU is hydrolyzed at this time. GDP from the hydrolysis of GTP remains associated with EFTU until displaced by EFTs. The EFTU EFTS form a complex that is split by binding of another GTP providing an EFTU GTP complex for the delivery of next amino acyl tRNA. EFTU GTP delivers all amino acyl tRNA except FMET tRNA. Please see the picture and table. The peptide bond formation. The activated amino acid attached to the tRNA in the P site initially FMET tRNA is transferred to the amino group of amino acyl tRNA in the A site. Formation of peptide bond is catalyzed by an enzyme called peptidyl transferase which is a 16S rRNA, an integral part of 50S subunit. In this reaction, two amino acids are attached to the tRNA, dipeptidyl tRNA, in the A site and leaves an uncharged tRNA in the P site. Now the translocation. The movement of ribosome in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction along the mRNA is called as translocation. This translocation is catalyzed by EFG. The EFG forms a complex with GDP which is hydrolyzed to GDP and PI. This movement results in the following process. Release of uncharged tRNA from the P site movement of the dipeptidyl tRNA to the P site and formation of unoccupied A site. Now termination. Elongation continues until a termination codon encountered. A release factor is responsible for 
termination of translation. Stop codons are recognized by the release factors. RF1 recognizes UAA and UAG. RF2 recognizes UAA and UGA. The third release factor that is RF3 in association with GTP promotes termination. The binding of release factor induces peptidyl transferase to release the peptide from the tRNA from P site by hydrolysis. The tRNA is also released from P site. The ribosomal subunit then separate in a GTP hydrolysis dependent manner. The 30th subunit may move along the mRNA until another Scheindelgano sequence is encountered and translation resumes or it may completely dissociate from the mRNA. Energy requirement for protein synthesis. Protein synthesis requires high energy phosphate bonds. Each peptide bond requires the cleavage of at least four high energy phosphate bonds. Let us discuss it. ATP is hydrolyzed to AMP and two phosphates for every amino acid attached to its cognate tRNA. One GDP is hydrolyzed to two GDP and phosphate upon binding of FMET tRNA to the P site. For every amino acid tRNA binding to the A site, one GDP is hydrolyzed to GMP and phosphate. Every translocation step, one GDP is hydrolyzed to GMP and phosphate. GDP is hydrolyzed to GDP and phosphate for every polypeptide synthesis terminated. Now, let us summarize what we have discussed in this session. Translation is a process by which ribosomes convert the information carried by mRNA to synthesis of new proteins. The machinery for protein synthesis consists of four principal components, mRNA, tRNA, amino acid tRNA synthase and ribosome. The mRNA consists of the coding sequence for protein and recognition elements for the initiation and termination of translation. tRNAs are small non-coding RNA chains that transport amino acids to the ribosome. Transfer RNAs have a site for amino acid attachment and a site called an anticodon. The anticodon is an RNA triplet complementary to mRNA triplet that codes for their cargo amino acid. Amino acyl tRNA synthetases attach amino acids to tRNA in a two-step process called charging. The ribosome molecules translate genetic code to a specific sequence of amino acids. The ribosome is a multi-subunit structure containing rRNA and proteins. It is a factory where amino acids are assembled to proteins. Translation takes place in three principal steps, initiation, elongation and termination. Initiation in prokaryotes involves the recruitment of smaller subunit to the mRNA. The ribosome has three sites for tRNA to bind. They are the amino acyl site abbreviated as A, the peptidyl site abbreviated P and the exit site abbreviated E. When an amino acyl tRNA initially binds to its corresponding codon on the mRNA, it is in the A site. Then a peptide bond forms between the amino acid of the tRNA in the A site and the amino acid of the charged tRNA in the P site. The growing polypeptide chain is transferred to the tRNA in the A site. The binding of release factor induces peptidyl transferase to release the peptide from the tRNA from P site by hydrolysis. Protein synthesis requires high energy phosphate bonds. Each peptide bond requires the cleavage of at least four high energy phosphate bonds. Now, I can give a few assignments for you to work out. First one, discuss the structure of tRNA. Discuss the concept of verbal hypothesis. Describe the translation in prokaryotes. Differentiate between prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes. Now, I suggest you a few references. Biochemistry, 5th edition, written by J. M. Berg, J. L. Timosko, L. Stryer, published by W. H. Freeman and Company, New York, USA, 2008. Cell Biology, written by Gerald Karp, 7th edition, John Willey and Sons, Singapore, 2014. Molecular Biology of the Cell, 5th edition, Garland Science, New York and London, 2007. Written by B. Alberts, A. Johnson, J. Lewis, M. Raff, 
K. Roberts and P. Walter. Next, Gene 9, written by Benjamin Levin, Johns and Barlett Publishers, Sudbury, Massachusetts, 2007. You can also visit the following websites www.hire.magrohill.com www.medicalbiochemistrypage.org Thank you for watching this program. Let's meet in another session with a new topic. Bye.